So I started uh, Input Output. Mm -hmm. the company I've been leading since 2015. And uh, basically we're a science and engineering company. So we hired all the scientists we could find. We have labs all across the world, four of them, one at University of Edinburgh, one at Tokyo Tech, one at University of Athens, and most recently one at University of Wyoming. And we've written more than 75 papers. A lot have gone through peer review and we've kind of fleshed out the whole science of the industry. And then on the engineering side, we built a very uh, evidence-based software type of company. So we have a lot of really hardcore programmers who have uh, go to places like Oxford and they do formal methods. And we apply all that rigor towards building cryptocurrencies. That's one of our core business facilities. But now we've branched out to layer two stuff and African consulting and uh, we build voting systems and credential systems. And uh, we now have about 250 people and we're in 40 countries. And, you know, I used wow. to travel all around the world. I traveled 200, 250 days a year pre-COVID. In fact, I think the last time we met up was in South Africa at uh, Ramaphosa's uh, ranch. Yeah. It's been a fun project. Uh, we've started as kind of like a DARPA program. So we said, let's do a bunch of research, high risk, high return, and who knows where we're going to go with that. And then uh, at some point we'll commercialize it. And the point is economic identity. So it doesn't work until diaspora can actually do banking stuff and have it have you know like dids and things like that uh, and it doesn't work until it's going to work in places like ethiopia or the townships in south africa and so forth so we kind of did three things in parallel we built this big science engine and now that's running at full capacity and it's just printing papers like crazy we built a giant engineering division and now it's writing code like crazy and we're having releases every week and then we built also a commercial division that actually entered a lot of uh, eastern european and Southeast Asian and uh, African jurisdictions. Uh, and we started talking to governments, educating people. Like for example, in Ethiopia, uh, we went and taught a class when uh, uh, we had 23 uh, women learn how to program Haskell and Plutus and Marlowe and these other things. We actually hired some of them. And that's usually how we enter jurisdictions is through education. So we go and partner with a ministry like an innovation ministry or an education ministry. You know, there's a word salad there that you have to navigate. And mm -hmm. uh, we say, hey, let's uh, let's go teach a bunch of people how to become great programmers. And they give us great candidates. We actually send our people into the country. And then once we have uh, that foothold, uh, we now actually have a local workforce that we can then use to start uh, bidding out contracts with the government and with companies there and other people. And there's a huge appetite right now for the things that we do because globalization is forcing all these countries to upgrade. They don't really have a choice in the matter. Either they upgrade or they lose market access or they just can't compete with their neighbors. So everybody's looking for new identity systems, new voting systems, new property systems, new supply chain systems and so forth. And kind of our competitive advantage is we get to know everybody before we even start talking about selling anything. And then a lot of the deals that we do, we interconnect them to local workforce. So instead of the code being written externally, you know, like in New York or something, it's written in Addis Ababa or something like that. We built Cardano, it's one of our flagship products, specifically to meet the needs of a lot of these deals that we've been trying to service. And what's nice about this workflow is it gives us uh, phenomenal business requirements. Uh, so basically, uh, the technical and business requirements come from the government or somewhere else. And they say, you must be able to work with this type of technology or these types of people, and they have this type of device. So we ask, well, can Cardano do this or not? So, you know, over a three to seven year period, what's going to happen is it will force the evolution of the platform uh, to eventually be ubiquitously useful for the bottom billion, the, basically the people that really need uh, help and access to these things. And what's also nice about it is you have no incumbency. So when you talk about, hey, let's build a decentralized bank or decentralized lending or decentralized insurance, these things, usually you're saying, well, how are you better than Chase or PayPal or, you know, these other services? Well, here they don't have access to those services. So you actually enter in with a monopoly being the decentralized system, which is of course faster and cheaper and uh, ultimately more resilient and so forth. So I say we're doing well. John O'Connor, I think he came with us to South Africa as well. He does a mm -hmm. phenomenal job and he's he's probably gone to 40 countries now in Africa and he knows pretty much every head of state at this point on speed dial. And uh, we have a lot of projects that were either in the pilot stage or we're actually bidding. And I think we might close a, a seven figure deal, our first uh, in Africa, in Ethiopia here in a few weeks, we'll be able to announce that. So uh, overall, it's been uh, very humbling because 
you, you enter into these jurisdictions thinking you know everything. Oh yeah, I read all the books, I know all the problems. And it's like, you know nothing. It's kind of like uh, Game of Thrones, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Uh, so <laughs> I, I had that experience. And uh, you know, you just have to listen and learn and wait. And it's taken a few years to really get momentum. And Cardano's caught up to a point where it really can start servicing these things. And uh, the commercial teams there now have the market access they need to start bringing millions of customers into the system. So overall, pretty good. I wanted to ask, what are some of the examples uh, that Cardano is being used for in Africa? So I've heard things like coffee supply chains. I've heard utility bills. What are some of the things that are it's being used for today? Yeah, we've done some pilots and uh, the key is to convert these into actual sustainable long-term deals. And usually how you do that is through what's called a public-private partnership. Uh, so basically we run a side of it, the government runs a side of it, and usually other partners come in. What's nice about that is once you get the structure co correctly built, it has a lot of political durability. So it doesn't particularly matter who happens to be the president of the country or you know, the current government structure. There's no incentive to ending that PPP because it's popular amongst the people and amongst the corporate interests, and it makes the government revenue. Uh, so the, the downside with PPPs is they take about three to seven years on average to set up, and it's a process. So you kind of tender a, you know, some sort of MOU, you sign that MOU, and we saw probably half a dozen of them by now. And uh, then you build something, you get a little bit of data, you do a pilot, you write a report, and then you kind of scale and scale. And actually a lot of these deals, we actually don't get paid up front. We actually have to carry the cost. And what happens is we get a revenue share model. So usually it's on a per transaction basis. So a lot of things we've been looking at right now are things that are in our core expertise and easy to roll out. Uh, academic credentials are one area that we're very keen to explore in Georgia right now. We're, we're going to do that for the whole country. And that gives us 50,000 customers uh, per, uh, per year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's those are permanent customers. They're kind of with us forever. Uh, and, you know, we're extending that to Ethiopia. And basically, those are high growth deals because once you, the students in that system, then as they graduate, they stay in that system, kind of like Facebook, and then they bring friends and family in. And then you can tether banking services and payment systems and remittance system, all kinds of stuff once you have that infrastructure in place. So those are the kinds of deals that we look for. We, I'm also very keen to do agricultural deals. I, I live on a farm. Yeah, I got 50 acres and I grow hay and alfalfa. And we have a lot of friends in the ag tech business. And, uh, you know, there's an enormous amount of innovation that's required there because there's kind of two competing demands. One is sustainable farming practices. So reducing your carbon output, making sure you don't destroy the land, you don't know, strip mine things, you know, clear cut forests, these types of things. Uh, and then the other is fair trade, where you actually have to prove that you're not using child labor and you're paying people right and et cetera, et cetera. So the problem with sustainability and fair trade provisions, and many people are actually requiring this now, like when Starbucks says, hey, we want to know where these coffee beans come from and we're not going to buy blood coffee, uh, you know, it, you have to prove that. And that's a big challenge, uh, especially if your model is we grow the beans, we put them on the back of a donkey, and we ride the donkey to, uh, you know, to you know, some place. <laughs> you know, you say, okay, now you have to digitize the entire supply chain. Uh, so, anyway, these are the deals that we look for, uh, and usually they're very complex because you have to deal on one side of the supply chain with a whole bunch of unbanked, non-digital smallholder farmers. Uh, who don't have really good infrastructure, so usually use a hub and spoke model where the small group of people who do have good infrastructure, you digitize them and then you kind of have spokes coming off and the farmers use them as a small business to interact. Then you have the, the weighing stations or the washing stations or whatever the intermediaries are in that supply chain and the logistics in the supply chain. And uh, there's a lot of carrots and sticks you have to put in. Uh, you know, for example, we do talk a lot uh, with the Agricultural Transformation Agency over in uh, Ethiopia, and they're led by a gentleman named Khaled Bamba. And he's responsible for 15 million smallholder farmers. And when I had dinner with him in Addis, I said, what's your problem, Khaled? You know, like, what really keeps you up at night? And he said, well, right now, I get these bags of fertilizer from Djibouti. And uh, by the time they get to Addis, they, they go from 50 pounds to 35 pounds. It's one hell of a diet. <laughs> you know, I need somebody to solve that problem for me. Mm. You know, because you know, there's theft, adulteration, waste and abuse in those supply chains. So that's a simple problem to state, but it's actually an incredibly difficult problem to solve. And blockchain alone is not a solution for that. It's just a, it's a necessary but not sufficient component to it. You have to look at all other things like specialized hardware, you know, social processes, 
better audit control, different ways of paying people, you know, these types of things that help you get there. So we're right in the middle of all that. We have a whole commercial division that you know, kind of does this stuff. And every now and then we get a really big thing and we get to announce it and uh, probably going to be able to announce something before the end of the year. That's a pretty big deal in Ethiopia. But most of the stuff is still in the pilot prototyping stage, which is nice because a lot of it will start waking up in 2021 is right when our smart contracts on Gogan wake up and, you know, when Voltaire turns on, all these other things turn on. So it's going to be a really fun year for us in 2021. A lot of the projects are now creating their own version of a stable coin. Is this something Cardano has considered or is this part of the roadmap? Yeah, we are definitely going to do a stable coin. It's just when you say stable coin, there's actually many different types of stable coin. Uh, in Africa in particular, a lot of governments have come to us and said, hey, we want to do commodity backed stable coins. We're real excited about that. So that's what the next five years are really about is to demonstrate the system that we built actually can do what we says it does. And then if that's successful, our hypothesis it it will appreciate to a point where we'll have the funding required to really go and play and get a billion users. And you know, we'll start doing crazy things. Like I'd love to go replace the Bank of International Settlements. Two thirds of all central banks are non-BIS members. Let's go build a competitor to that and make those two thirds stronger than the other third. Uh, we can talk about running elections of governments on the system. We can talk about a pan-African currency like the Euro but as a cryptocurrency, as opposed to you know some centralized uh, issuance. We can talk about UBI and actually demonstrate a sovereign wealth UBI uh, uh, flow like uh, we've pushed together. Uh, we can mm-hmm. talk a lot about uh, getting uh, resistant to emerging threats, like a full end and quantum resistant cryptocurrency. We can talk a lot about alternative infrastructure like building a satellite network to actually act as the relay background for the system as opposed to the general internet. So you can't be censored or shut out. Some countries, for example, have kill switches on their internet. They just flip a switch, the whole internet, the whole country shuts off. Uh, So let's create an alternative internet that can't be censored. Uh, You know, these types of things, I'd like within five years to either be flirting with them or have made progress towards them. And I'd like 100 million users in the system by the end of 2025 if uh, if we're still around and and so forth.